Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this is going to be uh, an explanation video on how the Scoville scale works, and this is kind of another introductory video for my uh, hot pepper sauce series. And this is going to explain to people who don't know anything about it, uh, just going to break down the information to, to really let people understand what hot really is. I mean, you may see someone eat some hot sauce and they make a funny face and you go, oh, yeah, man, that, that must be really hot. You have no idea what hot is, trust me. Um, some of this stuff is just ridiculous. I mean, it borderlines on pain and amounts and then how much you actually intake is crucial. Uh, some of this stuff, you can't even do a drop. If you literally do a drop, it will it will be painful. It'll hurt. It, it can damage you. I mean, another thing, I have to do another disclaimer. Some of these hot sauces are very dangerous, to be honest. Uh, it can induce a heart attack. You can get stomach ulcers from it. You can get... Uh, esophageal eroding. I mean, there's some serious, serious stuff going on if you do not take this seriously and take stuff in moderation. Some of the super duper ridiculous hot sauces out there, I'm tasting them as a, um, just as a novelty uh, because I do like spicy food, but for the most part, they're additives. They're food additives. They're not meant to be taken straight. All right, some of the stuff, you basically, you put the tip of a toothpick in the jar and then you swirl that around in you know a five pound bucket of chili and the whole chili is ridiculously screaming hot so you have to understand how hot some of the stuff really is and some of these numbers might give you a better understanding but anyway I'm gonna explain just how the Scoville scale works um, there's two units of heat measurement in our world uh, one and the most commonly known is the Scoville units uh, it's invented by a guy named Wilbur Scoville in 1912 and I'm gonna read a paragraph here explaining exactly what they do to find out how many Scoville units are in a specific pepper or sauce. As well as there's another, um, there's another heat scale that's used for, uh, for international food trade. In other words, if you're going to be buying, say, hot peppers for your, uh, your restaurant and you're buying them overseas, they don't tell you the heat level in Scoville units. There's another heat level, which is actually scientifically, they use uh, science to, to figure out what the heat level is in a pepper or a specific food item. Um, but it's not as used. It's more for business and industry than it is for, for us, the common people. But they use a scientific method called high-performance liquid chromatography, which um, figures out the heat level of a pepper or a sauce. And it's a, it's a smaller numbers level. Uh, usually it's one unit per every 15 on the Scoville scale. So if you happen to get a measurement in that specific scale, you basically multiply it by 15 and then you get the Scoville units. And it's, it's a rough, rough estimate. But anyway, first let's read how the Scoville method works. Okay, in the Scoville method, an alcohol extract of the capsaicin oil from a measured amount of dried pepper is added incrementally to a solution of sugar in water until the heat is just detectable by a panel, usually five taste testers. The degree of dilution gives it gives its measure of the Scoville scale. Thus, a sweet pepper or a bell pepper containing no capsaicin at all has a Scoville rating of zero, meaning no heat detectable. The hottest chilies, such as habaneros and nagas, have a rating of 200,000 or more, indicating that their extract must be diluted over 200,000 times before the capsaicin presence is undetectable. The greatest weakness of the Scoville uh, organ organoleptic <laughs> test is uh, imprecision. Because it relies on human subjectivity, tester, testers taste only one sample per session. So what this is saying is that the Scoville heat uh, test, you know, to find out how many Scoville units are in something, is it's not completely scientific. It has a scientific formula, but at the end of the day, you're relying on people's taste. You're relying on people, which is a huge factor in science, which most scientists don't like to rely on. That's why the international food trade has a different type of test that does things more scientifically. So anyway, I want to give you some examples and some numbers here of something, uh, all you know, a big variety of different uh, hot sauces and peppers as well as extracts. And we're talking a little bit about extracts in the video as well. But anyway, um, some of the lower numbers, it's going to give you guys something that you're familiar with so you can actually compare this. For example, uh, like I said before, the bell pepper as well as a couple other peppers here on the list um, have zero heat whatsoever. All right, there's nothing on the Scoville scale because there's no heat at all. Now, the very low numbers, if you guys see here, like the pimento, if you have uh, pimento peppers, maybe you're familiar with them, or pepperoncinis, or banana peppers, also very common in your food stores, they have anywhere from 100 to 500 Scoville units. 
Okay, so think about eating a pepperoncini or a banana pepper. Now, you have to eat them fresh, okay? If you get the jarred banana peppers or pepperoncinis, usually they're soaking in vinegar. And the vinegar will open up your taste buds and it will actually seem a little bit hotter than it actually is. But if you go to the store and buy a, you know, a fresh one and you eat just, just the fresh pepper, nothing else, that's going to give you a good estimate on, on heat. Again, anywhere from 100 to 500. Uh, going up just a little bit, um, the uh, Anaheim peppers uh, from Mexico, all those kind of uh, peppers, the poblano, uh, as well as some other here that I'm not familiar with at all. A little bit, a little bit hotter, 500 to 2,500. Now the next uh, jump up is what a lot of us are going to be most familiar with, and this is something that I think everyone can relate to. Jalapeno peppers, okay, paprika, and Tabasco sauce. All three of those uh, can be on the heat scale anywhere from 2,500 to 8,000. All right, so if you eat a jalapeno and it's too hot for you, forget it. Don't even bother with some of these hot sauces. It's just, it goes up and up and up and up from there, all right? But it's a very good base for you guys to know. If a lot of people out there use Tabasco sauce and you think, well, yeah, Tabasco sauce is pretty hot, but I can do hotter. This will give you a reference, okay? Tabasco sauce is no hotter than 8,000. 8,000. All right, so anyway, here's the list. You guys can see. I'm not going to read every one of these, but as we go up, it gets more and more ridiculous. You can actually pause your video right there, and you'll see some of these. But anyway, I also wrote some of the hottest just so we, we can get that out there so one knows you know what the peak is really as far as straight peppers go now this is not hot sauce this is not extract this is just a straight pepper from the plant completely natural the hottest pepper in the world right now is the naga viper the naga viper is 1.3 million on the scoville scale exactly 1,359,000 that's just for the pepper uh, second on the list is the uh, Naga Jalokia, also known as the Boot Jalokia, also known as the Ghost Pepper, which comes in at exactly a million. Um, then the Dorset Naga, which I wasn't as familiar with, that's just under a million, 923,000. Then we have the uh, Red Savina Habanero, which is the hottest of the Habanero family, 350,000 to 580,000. And then uh, lastly, really, is all the other Habaneros. There's tons of them. Um, you have Golden Habaneros, you have uh, chocolate habaneros. I mean, the list goes on and on, and those are anywhere from 100 to 350,000 on the Scoville scale. So that's the hottest peppers in the world. Okay, a lot of these hot sauces that I'm going to be dealing with have different kind of habanero mashes, which basically means you get a big bowl of habaneros and you you know mash them up, you, you blend them until it's just kind of like a paste or like a chunky salsa type consistency, and then of course they add other things into it. All right, so at this point, you may be asking yourself, well, if the hottest pepper in the world is only 1.3 million on the Scoville scale, how do you get something hotter? Well, that's where extracts come in. Now, extracts, basically any extract, is a concentrated version of something. Um, so imagine you have the Naga Viper, or let's not even, not even that, let's say the uh, Naga Jalokia, the ghost pepper, it's 1 million. Well, if you take, say, 10 of those, and you cook them down into a very, very fine, thick liquid, you just concentrated all that heat. So you now have more heat than you do from one pepper. So that's how that works. Um, some of the, literally the hottest sauces, I don't know if you can even call them a sauce because most of them are just straight extracts, but uh, the hottest in the world um, is 16 million. You cannot get hotter than 16 million on the Scoville scale. Uh, pure capsaicin is on there. Blair 16 million reserve and Blair 6 a.m. reserve are, uh, are the three hottest extracts in the world. Uh, next on the list is one of the most known and most common uh, of the super duper super hot sauces or extracts, and that is the source. And of course, everyone says, Yeah, try the source, you got to try the source. Well, the source comes in at 7.1 million, um, which is extremely, extremely impressive. Again, these are supposed to be food additives. All right. I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but you take one drop of the source and you <laughs> dump it into a 100-gallon tank of anything, and it's going to make the whole thing pretty darn spicy. Um, but anyway, the source is also extremely expensive. It's about $100 most places. I've seen it as cheap as like $83, but you got to be a serious hot sauce guy to, to spend that kind of money on one specific sauce. Anyway, again, to give you a reference, military-grade pepper spray is $5.3 million on the Scola scale. So to eat the source, 
<laughs> you'd be better off just spraying military pepper spray directly into your mouth. It'd be less hot. <laughs> and then uh, to give you an example of some of the stuff that I actually have, I'm going to be trying. The hottest uh, thing that I have right now is the, uh, the Mad Dog 44 Magnum, which is the 4 million Scoville scale extract. Okay. Really, really ridiculous. Now to come down to the bottom, I have some more information here uh, to give you Again, just as a reference to uh, some of the stuff that I have and I'm going to be trying. Now, I tried the Dave's Insanity Sauce, and that comes in at 180,000. Okay, again, compared to everything else. Uh, you know, go back. If you like jalapenos, do you think they're kind of hot? Well, again, they could be up to about 8,000. Eight. The Dave's Insanity Sauce is 180. Okay, that should give you a good idea of how, how hot it really is. Um, the Jerry's Mustard Gas that I just did a review on, hopefully it'll be up before this video, that's 125000 Now that was a huge surprise. I knew the Dave's was going to be hot, but this one I had no information whatsoever. I basically took a drop of it, same as Dave's, and it was almost as hot. It was super impressive. Um, Alright, now here's the big thing. The Mad Dog 357 uh, Magnum Specials. Uh, those, there's actually a bunch of different sauces in that series. Okay, If you say try 357 Magnum from Mad Dog, there could be 10 different ones you're talking about. They have a ghost um, sauce. They have their regular one is uh, 357,000 on the Scoville scale. That's why the, where the name came from. But the one I have is one of their collector's editions uh, that has a little bullet keychain. If you have a little bullet hanging or if you have a gun, like a little cap gun uh, hanging on it, you have the limited edition version and that's almost twice as much. It comes in at 600,000. So when I try that Mad Dog 357, it's going to be more than twice as hot as the Dave's Insanity. So again, this is supposed to give you a reference. I wanted to explain, first off, how the Scoville scale works. And two, to give you some numbers here to compare to. So you have a better understanding of what's actually happening when I do these videos. Now when I do some of these extracts and these super hot sauces, I'm going to take the tip of a toothpick. Okay, I'm going to barely touch it in there. I'm going to put it on a cracker. All right, and you're going to see it's just the tiniest, tiniest little bit. And I'm going to eat it. And I'm going to make all kinds of faces. And I'm going to you know, make noises and all kinds of gross things. And you're going to go, man, this guy's such a wuss. You know, he barely, barely put anything on there. Well, let me tell you something. All video responses are certainly welcome. If you think I was a wuss, put some more on. <laughs> make a video about it. Um, and by the way, another thing I do is I try to open the hot sauces on camera to show that they're not tampered with. Okay. That's why I take the wrapper. I know it's time consuming, but I take the wrappers off on camera so you know that it is the actual sauce and it's not some kind of fake substitute on the inside of the bottle. Um, just a, a quick little note there. But anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of these. Like I said, some of the super hot sauces, they're really food additives. If I make a big pot of chili or something else, if I make um, some kind of homemade sauce, I can spice it up by putting just a drop or two of this uh, super hot stuff in there. And it basically dilutes a little within the entire amount of sauce, and it still can be screaming hot. But anyway, I hope that uh, clears some things up. Um, if you do have any questions still, please feel free to comment. Either myself or someone else watching will, of course, respond to you if you have any more questions. But uh, that's pretty much it. Just an explanation and breakdown of the Scoville scale and some of these sauces and peppers that we're going to be trying in the future. So once again, thanks for watching as always. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.